Hello everyone, welcome to Antagi channel. My name is Serhi and today we will start a series of videos about the subscription billing module in Microsoft D365 Finance and Operations. Subscription billing enables organizations to manage contract revenue opportunities and recurring billing through billing schedules. Complex pricing and billing models and revenue allocation are easily managed and are built and recognized at the product line level. Multi-element revenue allocation enables allocation of revenue to comply with international accounting standards and generally accepted accounting principle standards. The subscription billing solution consists of three independent models. Recurring contract billing, revenue and expense deferrals and multi-element revenue allocation. Today we are going to dive into recurring contract billing module. Recurring contract billing lets you manage recurring billing and price management to provide control over pricing and billing parameters, contract renewal and consolidated invoicing. This module includes reports including monthly recurring revenue as well as line detail inquiries that help you analyze your sales and based on the data make business decisions. Now let's look at functionality of the recurring contract billing module. Before we start working with it we have to set up billing schedule group. Here you can select billing frequency, it can be daily, monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, annually or one time. Billing interval, it is time period between the billings. For example, if we set up billing frequency as daily and specify billing interval as 7, this means that we want to bill our customers each 7 days. Item type. Item type defines how you calculate product quantity to bill. You can select next options. Standard. Billing for the customer is done based on quantity selected on the billing schedule line. Usage. Billing is done based on usage for each billing period. You can manually enter consumption quantity in billing schedule line. Or milestone. Milestone billing is done based on milestone template that you set up. For example, milestones can be different services that you provide and you want to bill your customer for each service or it can be bundle of products and services. You can define allocation percentage or fixed amount for each milestone. And also here you set up your pricing method. The pricing method defines how the unit price for the items in the order is calculated. There are four options available. Standard pricing. When the standard pricing method is used, the unit price is selected based on base sales price selected for this product in product information management module. Flat. When the flat pricing method is used, the unit price for a billing schedule line item on the billing schedule page can be edited to any values that you want. So it is almost the same as standard pricing method, but the difference is that you can select unit price manually. Tier method can be used if your sales price variates from sales order quantity. Using this method, system will calculate price depending on your sales price setup. And flat tier. It can be used if your sales amount variates from sales order quantity. For example, if you have trade agreements that says that if the sales order quantity is between 10 to 20 pieces, the total billing amount is $5,000. For any quantity in this specific range, the flat tier pricing method is what you need. Now let's move on to working with the recurring billing. At first you create your billing schedule. You should select billing schedule group, your customer, billing start date and number of periods. After you create your billing schedule you can work with it. You can add lines for your order, add items and services that you are going to bill, maintain your milestones if the item type is milestone. Moreover you can later create invoices right from here. Using view billing detail form you can preview billing for each period, enter data about product consumption if you are billing your customer based on consumption and view sales orders and invoices that were created previously. This form can help you effectively maintain your recurrent billing for this specific schedule. As I mentioned before, you can generate invoices right from your billing schedule or by using periodic operation. When you generate invoices, firstly you select date filters to specify which exact periods and billing clients should be invoiced. Secondly, you may choose different posting options such as post invoice automatically, create invoice proposal, create sales order or create free text invoice. Using different tools in accounts receivable model, you can optimize your business process of recurrent billing. For example, set up approval workflow, attach your specific printed forms of invoices, etc. The last thing that we will look at today is monthly recurring revenue report. 
It is available in subscription billing workspace and provided by Power BI. This report provides data about beginning monthly recurring revenue, new sale, charm and ending monthly recurring revenue for each analyzed period with breakdown up to separate customer. This report can help your managers analyze recurring contract billing effectiveness, churn percentage, amount of new sales, and a lot of more and other data. So that was all for the first part of the subscription billing module. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on notifications to always stay tuned.